Becky here with Teach at Home. As promised, this is my son's ninth grade curriculum. So I will show you all the various subjects and what we're going to use for each one. So stick around and let me show you what I got. For English this year, I have decided to have my son take an online class. I stumbled upon classes through the HSLDA Academy, which I didn't know exist, um, via an email they sent me this year. And I had been looking at various writing and English programs online, and none of them were quite what I wanted. And this class was actually exactly what I wanted for my son for high school um, English. So. Um, that is what we're going to use. We're going to use HSLDA, um, HSLDA's, um, I can't say it, HSLDA Academy's English 1. And they also have English 2. By the time he gets to 11th grade, they will have an English 3. And then for, um, for his senior year, he will be taking AP English. That is my hope anyway. So, um, it works out really nice. So these are the books required by them. It is a, they're going to teach um, reading and writing. They'll have them read the classics, which I'll show you the books that he has to read for that course. And then um, they'll be analyzing the works they read and I guess using these books to help um, better their writing and English skills. So um, this is Elements of Language. The third course, and this book I actually got used via Amazon. Um, as soon as I knew my son was taking the course, I went online to try to find a used copy of this. And I was really pleasantly surprised with the quality um, and condition of this book. So, I mean, it looks like a pretty basic textbook. Um, it's colorful, it's broken up into good sections. Um, I don't know if my son will really like it because he's just not a writing English type person. He does like to read, so he has that going for him. So hopefully he'll enjoy reading the books and then kind of go along for the writing. Um, my son can write, but he's a reluctant writer. And I was hoping that this would be, um, I think, you know, I've heard that a lot of people have better luck when they have their kid doing it for someone else because they want to do a good job for, you know, someone other than mom. So um, I'm hoping that's kind of going to be his mindset when he takes this course. Um, so um, that's what that is. And then they've got 1,100 words you need to know by Barons. And then this is broken up into various weeks. Um, it looks like it's more of a vocabulary thing. Um, I'm not quite sure, obviously, how the teacher is going to use this because I don't think there's going to be as many weeks of the class as there are in this book. But maybe she'll double up or not use certain lessons. I'm not really sure for that. This here is the wonderful pile of books my son will be reading through his English class this year. Um, they have The Chosen, which is one I never even heard of before, more or less read myself. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Um, the Pearl by John Steinbeck. The Tale of Two Cities by Dickens. Uh oh, I just lost it. Our Town by Thornton Wilder. I really enjoy this one, so I'm kind of hoping he'll enjoy this book, but I don't know. Romeo and Juliet, which we did do this past year, but um, I feel that can only help him when doing it again this year and having to actual, actually, you know, analyze it the way um, he should for the English class. And this is an actual, um, actually a different version from the one we use. We use the um, Shakespeare on the Double version, which had the modern English on one side and the Elizabethan English on the other. And this text also, um, actually has the um, original Old English on the right and then it has various notes and explanations on the left to better help them understand that. So um, this is the book the teacher wanted. So this is what we have. 
but if he needs it he also has the Shakespeare on the double book um, as well. And then they have Silas Marner by George Eliot. So that's what my son will be reading this year. Because my son's English class starts at the end of August and we actually start school at the beginning of July, um, there's going to be a couple months in there where he doesn't actually have any English he would be doing. So um, I bought the Abeka book, Vocabulary, Spelling, and Poetry 3. We have used 1 and 2 in previous years. And generally we do the spelling and the poetry. We're not going to do that this year. I'm just going to use those beginning works, uh, beginning weeks of the school year to um, go over vocabulary. So, and this is like the regular books. Um, previously, they're set up the same way. And this book, I believe, has 28 lists. And what I did was I went through every two or three lists and pulled um, vocabulary words from that. I didn't pull them all because some of them he already knows for sure. So rather than go over words he already knows, we'll just go over the ones he doesn't know. So I made about 14 lists um, that I typed up and he will um, study those words and do um, activities with those words to learn them and then I'll have a test every Monday um, for those words. And that'll just be for um, those first couple months and then I believe the class ends the end of April, so he'll have, um, we finish at the end of May, so he'll also have May where he's not doing any English and that's when we'll finish up the rest of the list we didn't get done at the beginning of the year. And then to make sure he's, you know, reading something, um, we didn't get to do this book last year um, on Adoniram Judson who is a missionary for Burma, um, so we'll, um, I'll just have him read this at the beginning of the year and you know, do like the comprehension questions, kind of make it a little bit of a study and maybe have like a final project for it. Um, so yeah, that will be the rest of his English for the year and hopefully it'll work out well. Okay, so for math, we just finished up the second year using Saxon's Algebra 2. We did it as a two-year course, and we're going to do advanced mathematics as a two-year course as recommended by Art Reed. If you don't know about Art Reed, he's been teaching Saxon for a long time and knows a lot of information about it. Um, he has a really good website. If you check it out, it'll be right listed right there. And um, if you go to like the newsletter section, every month he has a newsletter and it has a lot of good information um, regarding the Saxon texts in there. Um, he does tell you like um, the best route to go for various levels of math, like if you have a struggling math student or if you have an advanced math student or just like an average math student, um, he'll tell you the best way to use the books, the best order to use. So. Um, it's really worth looking into if you are using Saxon, so don't be afraid to check that out. So, um, this is the solution manuals. I bought all these as a homeschool kit. And if you don't know, the solution manuals is a full, like, step-by-step, -step, um, guide to, like, the answers, um, of all the problems in each lesson. It labels, you know, the lesson, the problem set, um, which is the lesson it came from, and then I'll have, you know, each problem laid out step by step. I mean, this isn't the only way the problem can be done, but if um, your student is struggling with how to do it, then this will give them the answer on how to do it. So, um, it's pretty nice like that, and pretty self-explanatory. This kit also comes with the homeschool packet. The homeschool packet has just the answers to each question for the problem sets for each lesson and then it also has all the answers for all the tests and um, the steps and how to get those answers so 
um, it makes it easy to correct the problem for each test unless your child decides to go a different route <laughs> and do it in his own way but overall it makes it pretty easy to grade and uh, I really like the way their books are set up. Now this is the student text and um, most Saxon student texts are set up the same at least from where we used it from 7-6 up through now so um, they have the lesson labeled if I can get to it they have the lesson labeled and then they'll tell which topics they're teaching or reviewing in this section usually it is teaching um, once in a great while you'll see something um, they've done before and I think it might say like part two they might add on to something else they taught earlier so it just depends on what they're doing there really is no certain order that it uses I mean it doesn't combine topic areas you might find something about triangles in lesson two and then maybe you'll find something new about triangles in lesson 32 I mean it just varies and I don't know if there's really a method to the way it's set up but to me it doesn't seem like there is so I don't know I'm decent in math but I'm not like 100% math minded so if there is some logic to it I don't know what it is but um, every lesson will have teaching for the subject and then it'll have sample problems for what it just taught although this one doesn't go figure um, so here it's teaching this is kind of a bizarre one. Usually there are some sort of examples um, here, like here they got example 29.1 showing what they just taught regarding quadrantal angles. I don't remember hearing that term ever. But then it has after it teaches and after the examples um, I know the other books have like practice problems. It doesn't, I haven't found any yet in this, but I haven't gone through all the lessons. And then they'll have the problem set, which are the actual problems for the lesson. And doing it as a two-day thing, my son will read the teaching part and watch the teaching part um, via the CDs that I will show you. And then um, he'll do the odd problems. And then day two, um, we used to just do the even problems, but this year I'm adding another aspect to it. He will use the solution manual, remember this guy right here that has all the answers and the work, to go over his work after I've checked that he's actually done it and done a good job on it. So um, that kind of takes his, takes, takes his, uh, it kind of takes the stress off of me uh, in regards to correcting it and getting it out back to him really fast and gives him some more responsibility in learning to check it himself. So I will continue to check the tests and correct those myself, obviously. Um, but this will make it so I don't have as much in regards to trying to read his handwriting and figure out some of the weird steps he's tried to use to get answers. And then these are the CDs. Um, the dive CD actually came, I believe, as part of the kit. And we used the dive CD a little bit for Algebra 2. Um, I think that's what included the CLEP teacher to help my son review for the CLEP exam. But um, the actual lessons we weren't 100% thrilled with. And I also don't like you can only use it on the computer. So what we did was we bought Art Reads um, teaching CDs. And these can be used in a DVD player or on the computer. And it does, you know, lesson by lesson for um, the various lessons in Saxon Advanced Mathematics. It also has, I believe, Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 on his website available. I'm not 100% sure what all is available. But they have this one for sure. And for some reason they break it up into different um, parts. This is actually only like lessons 1 through I think, I want to say 90, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Let's see. 60? I guess lessons 1 through 60. See, this ends at 60. But, um, so yeah, when we get towards the middle of the book, I have to buy the next one, which will cover the rest of the book. But, um, my son really liked a few of the sample CDs we saw of his, 
So I think it'll be a good way for him to um, learn those math skills. So yeah, Saxon Advanced Mathematics. That is going to be math for ninth and 10th grade year. One of the most complicated subjects for me to decide on this year was science. A typical high school science program. I know when I was in school, it was earth science, which I actually did in eighth grade, and I had him do in eighth grade. And then it's biology, chemistry, physics, and then in my 12th grade year, I took an AP class. Um, but I've actually read that it's actually better to do like physics, chemistry, biology because once you have the physics and chemistry um, knowledge, it's a lot easier to do like the biology um, in reference to like the chemistry regarding life processes and things like that. So my son really prefers chemistry and physics so I thought I would start his high school years off with a uh, science he really enjoys, which is why I decided to go with chemistry. And he kind of already has a little bit of a background in chemistry. It's something he studies up on on his own, so I don't think it's going to be like difficult for him going into it. Um, I was just having problems finding the book I wanted to use. Normally we've done a lot of apologia, and I've heard not so good things about apologia's newest chemistry book. So. Um, the book I actually decided to use was this, um, Discovering Design with Chemistry by Dr. J.L. I don't know if it's Weil or Wiley. I'm going to go with Weil, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but I stumbled upon this um, quite by accident, and when I read it, the description, and based on what people have said about it, it sounded like a really good book to have, and it says that like the labs are better than the labs recommended by Apologia Chemistry. So um, this is what we're going to use. And I opened it up when I got it and I was really quite pleased with its layout and how it looks. A lot of diagrams, pictures. Um, and then it's got like review questions and such. The only thing I don't like about this is this part of it. Solutions to the comprehension check questions right here in the text at the end of the chapter. Now part of the work the student is assigned to do is um, answer these comprehension check questions. And I don't like the fact that the answers are right there for them. So even though my son can do the work, he might take the shortcut if he knows it's available. I'm not going to tell him that it's in there, but I'm sure he'll discover it on his own. I just wish it was in a separate um, book all by itself and then I could, you know, hand it over at the end of each chapter if I wanted him to go over it or go over them myself, depending on how we're going to do that part. But um, I also did find out that this guy has done a couple of other Apologia texts. Um, I think he either did general or physical science for Apologia, or maybe both, I'm not sure. And I think he did the second edition of Apologia Chemistry. Um, it's the third edition you have to look out for. So um, I decided to go with this, and hopefully my son really enjoys it. And then just for fun, you saw this sitting there on top of this. This is the Cartoon Guide to Chemistry. And I just thought it was kind of a um, neat addition to the regular chemistry book. So I guess we'll be doing chemistry this year. I gotta figure out what lab equipment we need, but other than that, we're ready to go with this. And um, as a side note, there is no actual notebook you can buy to go with this, but there is a download you can get if you go to the publisher website and I think another website maybe christianbook.com um, the Berean Builders website has this book and if you look at the description it has a thing, uh, different files and it's called worksheets and the worksheets file is a PDF file of about 117, 118 pages where you can you know print them out and um, 
have your child answer the questions on those pages. Um, I plan to just send them to like a print shop type thing like Staples and get it printed there and bound because um, it does need to be done in color. I only have a black and white printer and it would be really nice if it was just put together like a notebook. So if you're looking for a notebook to go with it, it's free. You just got to print it out or pay to have it printed elsewhere. So yeah, that is ninth grade science for us. Alright, so this is my son's health curriculum. This is by Abeka. It's Health in Christian Perspective. And this is the high school health um, program from Abeka. They don't have one for every single year. They just have one. Um, they do recommend that it is done in the ninth grade year. And this is a half year course. Now this version here is the older version, but I got a really good deal on it along with all the other pieces like the teacher's book and the tests and quizzes for a really good deal and a used curriculum sale. So this is what we're going to use this year. Um, you can see it's broken up pretty well into different areas, different sections. And then it's got, you know, different pictures, different diagrams of how to do things. Overall, it looks to be like a pretty interesting book. Also has um, review sections at the end of each chapter. And like I said, there are tests and quizzes you can get to go along with it. So it's a pretty straightforward curriculum. And my son has always seemed to like Abeka Health. So kind of a no-brainer as far, as far as what we chose for this. So yeah, that's health. This is my son's social studies for ninth grade. Um, this is what you use if you're using like a Becca curriculum for the second half of the year um, when you're finished health. So this is also a half year course. I'm not quite sure why Abeka does only three and a half credits of social studies or history versus, you know, a full four. But they seem to know what they're doing, so I'm just going to go um, with their plan for that. So yes, this is World Geography and Christian Perspective by Abeka. And my son always liked like maps and geography and things about the world so I think he's really going to enjoy this course and you can see it's got information about you know different um, different countries and areas of the world and it has a lot of colorful pictures I really like the Abeka text because they often put things in bold or underline the important um, parts of the chapter so you know exactly what to focus and study. Um, so they kind of make it pretty easy for um, the children to go over it. Um, my son's never fully taken advantage of that unfortunately but hopefully this year he'll get a better grasp of doing that. Um, the World Geography book also comes with this map studies book, which is like a workbook. And you can see it has different map sheets in it. Also has different like question sheets about the areas of the world. So, you know, they can answer questions along with what they're learning and label the areas that they're learning about. Kind of to make it a, you know, a good, uh, well-rounded program. So there you go, World Geography. Alright, this is my son's Bible curriculum for the year, Kings of Israel. And this is another Rebecca book. 
and this is just the Bible curriculum they recommend for ninth grade. And it's just on um, different studies on the Kings. And it, each um, each lesson has like a title and a section they're supposed to read from the Bible. And then it gives kind of like a, an overview and outline of the text that they had to read. And then, I don't know why they do it this way, they have um, questions for each section and they have to answer those. Um, I don't know why they don't just have each set of questions at the end of each section, but maybe they just don't like that format. Maybe it's easier when they're printing it, I'm not really sure. But that's what my son will do. He'll read the section and do the questions. So he'll go through that. Um, there also are memory passages for these readings. And I'm also going to have my son learn various proverbs throughout the year. Um, I actually read an article where one man's goal for his children, a requirement for them graduating from their home school was to memorize proverbs. And I kind of was inspired by that. And since I believe sixth grade, I've had him working on proverbs, writing out different verses, reading a new verse, um, every day because obviously there are 31 proverbs which goes along with you know up to the 31 days of the month so whatever day of the month it was that would be the proverb he would work on sometimes he would read it sometimes he would listen to it sometimes he would write something from it or do a study on it um, so he's had a lot of work with proverbs already and instead of having him memorize poems I'm going to have him memorize proverbs so we'll do you know, like six or seven of those a year, I believe, up through the end of his senior year when he should be able to finish them all. Um, we'll do one or two and see how it goes, and then if that seems like, you know, too lofty of an ideal um, in terms of him accomplishing that, then, you know, I'll rework the plan and see what we can do instead. But for now, that is the plan. So. That's what we're going to be doing for Bible for ninth grade. Alright, so a couple more things you don't see here are my son's foreign language and my son's elective. For foreign language, he'll be continuing on with Spanish via the Homeschool Spanish Academy. And he'll also be doing an elective. He wants to do a computer course of some type. Um, I'm looking into various computer science options, but he also, um, he would prefer to do like a web design course. So I'm looking to see what kind of things are out there. Um, I found a couple of online ones that are a bit pricey, so I'm not sure if that's what I want to use. But I'm also looking at free options via um, Coursera or MIT Open Courseware. So we'll see what I can find for that. And some sort of computer course will be his elective for his ninth grade year. So that is my son's ninth grade curriculum. And if you want a listing of this, check out the link below. And thanks for watching. Bye!